Hey, this will be, this is Paul of the Mountain Ray Channel. This will be my last video of the night. I was going to do a rant on Twilight and 3D, but I'm not going to do that. And I was also going to do a little rant on 4K, but that was too much to do, so I'm not going to do that. This will be my last video of the night, probably for, for, for a while, until I see more films and have something to talk about. I'm also going to talk a little bit about the Black Dolly Murder new album and the Children of Ballroom new album in this video. It's a, kind of like a music movie talk in one. I don't know if, if I'll do this all the time, but the Children of Ballroom album, Halo of Blood, I just finished listening to that last night. Great album. Wouldn't say it's as good as the Sabbath or the Black Dolly Murder, but it's good, or the Suffocation, but it's good. Um, the Black Dye Murder, I would say, is amazing. I love the album. It's great. Heavy. It's like what you expect from Black Dye Murder. My only gripe about Black Dye Murder is they have to go, they want to go on the Warp Tour to have, to get new fans, which I can understand. But out of all tours you can do to get new fans, you're going to choose the Warp Tour? I don't know. That was just me. But the album's great. I advise anybody to buy it if they're a fan of metal or death metal or any type of metal. It's great. Now on to the movie talk. Now, I'm going to talk about some movies that I've seen that I liked. This will be like a more positive movie talk. Not ranty like my last couple that I did right? when I was talking about the Red Dawn remake, the Texas Chainsaw, new film, and Real Evil. Those are like like three shit fests right there. I'm just gonna say it right now. Now in this film, it's gonna be a little. It's gonna be more positive. It's gonna be more um more positive than my than my other movie talks that I've done the past f couple of weeks. The first movie I want to talk about in this video is probably I would put this in my top six from tw for 2012. It's, uh, Silver Lines Playbook. I've never saw, I, ne I mean, I never read the book, but mental illness is a, I have mental illness and stuff. So this film really touched home with me, you know, with medication and stuff that happens over the years. I, I first was diagnosed with mental illness when I was 15 and I've had it pretty much most of my teen years and into my adulthood I've had it and I just wanted to bring that up and in this movie touched home with me and like I went through certain aspects like I've never I've never been married or never had anybody you know get killed or anything like the characters in this movie like Bradley Cooper's wife cheated on him and Jennifer Lawrence's husband was killed well, I think he killed himself or something like that I just don't remember um good film um like there's a lot of bickering in the movie like if you're not into yelling and foul language you're not gonna like this film uh I'll say this, Jennifer Lawrence deserved her nomination and win. Robert De Niro deserved his nomination. It was a great performance. And I liked Bradley Cooper's performance. I would have to say, right off the bat, Bradley Cooper should do more drama roles. I mean, this isn't really, I wouldn't say really a drama, per se, but it's, it's pretty good for what it is, and that's uh, Silver Lines Playbook. I would put this in my top 10 of 2012. Next is a film that came out in the 70s. And it's from the author that brought you Taxi Driver. That sold me right there. I, I've been seeing the trailers for this for a long time until you know I finally wanted to see it. And I find it weird too sometimes. I'll, like, I'll rent something from the Redbox or I'll buy something. And then like a few weeks later it gets added on the Netflix stream. I mean, I'm the type with certain films and music, even games, I like to own the physical copy of it. Like, I really don't like spending full price on games anymore. But 
I still would like to have the physical copy, not download stuff like a lot of people do now. I mean, I download music, but I do that to get used to the album, and then I'll know later on that I'm going to buy it. But that's just me. And this movie is the re-release film from Shout Factory, and that's Rolling Thunder. Now, this film's great. I would advise anybody, if you like revenge stories or even Taxi Driver, that should bring you in right there. It's even got kind of like an early Punisher vibe to it. Not really, but a little bit. And there's some scenes in the film that remind me reminded me of Taxi Driver. And that's Rolling Thunder. If I have anybody to see this, and Tommy Lee Jones was young in the film, and he was great as his partner. And I advise anybody, if they want to see a, an awesome ending to a film that we really don't get anymore, watch this. It's great. It ain't going to run you that much. It's, it's under like 99 minutes, maybe under that with cre without credits. So you're not losing a lot, you know, watching this. I don't understand why the stores don't sell us. Best Buy didn't have it. Target didn't have it. Walmart didn't have it. The only place where I could have gotten it at, which I did, was Bars and Noble and Amazon. <coughs> and that's what I did. I got it off of, I got it at Bars and Noble when they were having their sale. But that's uh, Rolling Thunder. I advise anybody to see it. So it's, it's a very forgotten film, I, I guess you could say. But that's Rolling Thunder. I advise anybody to see it. Next is probably one of the best films that I've seen so far this year. I mean, I liked Side Effects, and I liked, um... What was that? I don't even remember what the movie was. I, 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 I'm going blank, but that's Arnold's comeback film, Last Stand. Yes, this film is more action oriented and stuff going on. Um, Johnny Knoxville's not in the film much, so if you're a Johnny Knoxville fan, you want to see this, not going to get you. You have to be like more of a loyal Arnold fan to really get into this film. Like, I can name some films of Arnold that I grew up with or I've seen over the years that I have either liked or didn't like. Commando, probably one of his best films. I love the film. Yet, there's a lot of mess-ups in the film, but I love it. There's Running Man, another great Arnold film. Then you have the original Terminator, great film. Terminator 2, great film. Then there's End of Days is good, but I can't put it up there with his early work, like Conan and, and Commando and stuff like that. Last Action Hero and Kindergarten Cop, they're okay to me. I mean, I like them, I can watch them, but they're not my favorite. Um, Collateral Damage, no, sorry, didn't like it, wasn't my cup of tea. Batman, Batman Robin, probably one of his weakest, shittiest roles for an Arnold film that I've ever seen in my life. It's shitty film, shitty performance, I don't even care about Batman and Robin, I'm not even going to talk about that film. And that's just my little Arnold discussion, and I don't like Batman and Robin, we'll never own it, we'll never watch it again, it is shit. Okay, that's his last stand. Great film. Arnold as a sheriff was amazing. I loved it. I just have to put bring that out there. Seeing Arnold on the screen holding a gun. This I advise any any anybody in Hollywood play this and it shows you how action is supposed to be. Not crap today where we get an American Idol idiot that's going to play Casey Jones. I really need a pretty boy playing Casey Jones. Are you, are you retarded, Hollywood? Are you not thinking there? It's common sense. I'm not going to get into that. Because I am going to be boycotting the Ninja Turtles film when it comes out. They're going to be aliens. I don't care. This will be the last movie I'm going to talk about. Until I get on to my next one. Which I rented at the Redbox. But I don't own it. I'll talk about that in a second. This is the new Die Hard film. You already know my rant on this with the extended cut. How it's only like four or five minutes from the theatrical 
And now some of the scenes, it doesn't really feel like a Die Hard film. Um, what really saved this movie, I would say, is the action. Because all they need to do is get a decent villain and a better script and better director. And this would have been a great film, I think. But it's good for a Die Hard film, I guess. But not really. It's probably got it's got the worst villain of any Die Hard film. The father son bonding wasn't even that good, but it's worth owning if you can get it for the right price and you're a completist like I am, and you have to own everything of a series that you like. Like with me, I like Indiana Jones the first three, and I even kind of like the fourth one. I can own the fourth one. Because I don't understand people say that it's not it's unrealistic and it's not good. The other films were unrealistic. You know? Steven Spielberg tried with the movie as well. Yeah, you had George Lucas in there fucking everything up like he's been like he did with the prequels to Star Wars, except for the third one, because I kinda like that one. But it's good the the new Die Hard, but don't go into it expecting a part one or a part three. I would put this more on the level of like a part two and a part four. You know, Die Hard 2, Die Harder, I think it was called. And and Live Free or Die Hard. I would put it in the level of this. Not one or three. But that's just me. And this is Die Hard. This is a good day to Die Hard. I would say it's underrated for what it is. But don't go into it expecting Die Hard 1 or Die Hard 3 or any of the four Die Hards. It's going to it as its own movie, and it's actually entertaining, and better than the director's last film, Max Payne. Because that film was, was god awful. Oh boy, was that awful. Um, One more film I want to talk about before I end the video really quick. Men in Black 3. I liked it. I liked the time travel. My only complaint about the movie was some of Will Smith's acting. It just seems like he was hamming it up in most of the film. But... It was still good because I I like the first Men in Black. I never got around to seeing the second one, which I should have before I saw the third one. But that's just me. I mean, there is scenes in Men in Black 3 that I didn't like. But what saved the movie for me was a good villain, decent story, and it had a good pace. That's what I liked about it. Now, one more thing I wanted to say before I end the video is... I will probably be buying Spring Breakers, so if I like it or dislike it, there'll be a future movie talk video on that. I'm probably going to try out the new Evil Dead when that comes out. I'm probably going to try out the, the Randy Orton film, 12 Rounds 2. I might try that out. Um, I also might try out the new Jim Carrey film and Steve Carell, the... The uh, Burt Wonderstone. I might try that out. Identity Thief. 21 and Over. Which I don't know why I'm even going to waste my time. Because I already know it's going to suck. But I'll watch it. Uh, movie 43. Another movie that's probably going to suck. But I'll try it out. Um, 42. I'll probably try that out. And that's it for now. I'm just going to be going on and I'm going to lose my time. Um, this is Paul of the Matt Wilson Series 8 channel. This was my movie talk video. More of a positive movie talk video. I wasn't ranty as much as my other ones. So this movie video may not be that good. But this is Paul, Matt Wilson Series 8, signing out. Have a good night. See you.